My name is uh, Chris Tobias, and I'm the uh, general manager of the Optane uh, Solutions Division at Intel. And uh, thanks for spending some time today at the uh, Intel Optane Technology Tech Field Day. Uh, very, very pleased to be speaking with you about this topic. We're going to cover four basic topics today. Uh, I'll give an uh, Intel Optane Technology Overview, and then I'll talk about Intel Optane SSDs and some storage use cases. And then my colleague, uh, Christy Mann, will talk about uh, Optane uh, persistent memory. And then uh, Frank Ober will talk about Intel Optane technology uh, in the cloud. So to start off, I'm going to talk about the differences in memory technology. And these three little hexagons represent memory cells. So on the left, you have uh, higher cost, but higher performance. And on the right, you have higher density, uh, but uh, uh, lower performance. So starting on the left with DRAM, the way a DRAM memory cell is constructed is it's electrostatic. So basically you use a charge uh, to store the zero one. This is pretty familiar with everyone. And it has one transistor in the substrate uh, with a capacitor in the physical device as part of the components. And for the structure, it's 2D planar, which is important because that's different than the rest of the uh, technologies on this chart. So let's go to, over to another familiar technology and that's on the right is uh, 3D NAND. And for materials, this is also electrostatic. So it does store the, uh, the data as charges uh, in the memory cell. So today with TLC, uh, that's uh, three bits per cell. And with QLC, that's four bits per cell. And uh, for TLC, that's actually uh, eight charges inside the cell and it goes to 16 with QLC. So you can see some of the complexity uh, as you go to denser memories. And then as you look at the components, it's one transistor per string uh, through the, uh, the 3D layering. Uh, which finally brings us to the structure uh, is it's today we're shipping 96 layers of uh, NAND in our, in our uh, 3D SSDs. And by the end of the year, we'll be moving that to 144 layers. So you can see very, very dense uh, memory technology on the 3D NAND side. So let's go to Intel Optane technology and understand how this is different than the other two. So first is the materials, it's actually atomistic. So when you apply a charge, uh, to the memory cell, it changes the uh, atomic bonding properties of the, of the material. And that's how it retains the data. And then it's one selector per one memory cell as the components uh, in, in this structure. And then when you look at the structure, it's also 3D layer. Today it's uh, two decks uh, with the uh, opportunity to increase more uh, going into the future. So you can see how the three memory technologies are different. If you change any of these characteristics, it changes the performance and capability of the memory. So let's talk about how that fits and how that's specifically different and why Intel Optane technology is unique. So first, when we compare it to DRAM, it's persistent. The information is retained uh, even after the power interruption. Um, and one of the, two of the biggest differences versus NAND, so if you're familiar with using uh, SSDs in your environment, uh, Optane is right in place and byte addressable. So with NAND, you know, if you have to write in 4K blocks, even if you have data that's smaller than that block, you have to write that whole block. So it takes up more of the SSD space. Um, and then also you have to erase a group of blocks uh, when you need to move that data uh, during garbage collection. So this creates two major issues is uh, that you gotta deal with in NAND SSDs is write amplification and garbage collection that Optane Media does not have to deal with. And this provides consistent quality of service. So if you're writing to the Optane, it's always gonna perform and it's not gonna degrade in its performance characteristics. And then moving to the right, it's a super low latency uh, media uh, versus NAND. I'll talk about where that fits in uh, to the uh, memory storage hierarchy. Looking at this pyramid, you'll see uh, at the top is the highest performance uh, uh, memory media. And at the bottom is the most dense memory media. So in the old von Neumann compute architecture, you used to just have a CPU, DRAM, and some sort of storage device, a hard disk drive, or perhaps even tape uh, back in those days. So since then, Intel added many layers of cache in the CPU. And what we've discovered since then is that this uh, memory storage hierarchy uh, tends to follow some rules. And that's called the 90-10 locality rule. And basically, about 10% of the data in the lower, uh, lower level will benefit from being in a higher performance uh, level of the memory storage hierarchy. And 
the, going the other direction, if you can get a 10x improvement in performance, you can go create a new layer. So let's just look at how this works. If you go down, you create 10x in capacity. If you go up, you need 10x improvement in performance. So the first, you know, about a decade ago or a little bit more than that, uh, SSDs were introduced and that introduced a new layer in the memory store storage hierarchy, uh, giving you 100 microsecond uh, latency time. And then most recently, we've in, in, in introduced two great new devices, Intel Optane Persistent Memory uh, and Intel Optane SSDs. So the SSDs have about a 10 microsecond uh, latency, and then the Optane memory is uh, sub, sub one microsecond. And then when I talked to you before, if we had lots of time, I could show you all these charts. When you write to the media, that latency remains the same. When you write to NAND media, that latency increases to hundreds of microseconds or more uh, under load. So that's one of the big benefits of Optane. 